Hey everyone, welcome, I am Mr. Bo, and today IGN revealed some brand new information regarding PvP, including how Control is going to be changing in Destiny 2, a brand new multiplayer map, as well as gameplay of the Titan, Sentinel, and the Warlock Voidwalker. So let's get into some of this information. I will leave links in the description below to all four IGN first videos, you can go watch them all in their full. They're about five minutes each. In this video, I've chopped them up, taking little bits out of each one. So again, if you want to watch the full versions, links are in the description below. So let's start off by talking about Control, because it has changed in a few different ways from what we saw in Destiny 1. So the first big change is obviously Control is now 4v4 from the 6v6 we had in Destiny 1. Every game mode in Destiny 2 is 4v4, so they've had to change a few things to allow for the new player count. For instance, when you spawn in, whichever flag you spawn at, so that's A or C, will already be captured for you, making it a lot easier for people to work out where they need to go. They either go straight to B and engage in probably a big fight, or they flank round and maybe go and capture the enemy's flag and gain some points that way. Now the way you capture flags in Control has also changed. Before in Destiny 1, it would have a two-step phase. You'd need to go onto an enemy flag, neutralize it, and then you could capture it. That meant by the time you were capturing it, an enemy was probably already there and you'd have to engage. While in Destiny 2, there is no two-step. You get on an enemy flag and you capture it straight away. You no longer need to neutralize flags before you actually secure them. Now along with that, when capping a flag in Destiny 1, the more people you had on that flag, the quicker you'd capture it. In Destiny 2, they've done away with that. One person capping a flag is going to be the same amount of time as two people, three people, or even four people capturing a flag, meaning you can spread your team out across the map a lot more easier now, instead of having multiple people on one flag. Now the whole thing about PvP in Destiny 2 is they want to make it simplified, make it a lot easier for people to get into it. So they've changed how the point scoring system works in Control. For instance, in Destiny 1, when you killed someone, you'd get 100 points or 150 points depending on how you killed them, in Destiny 2, it's completely changed. If you kill someone, you get one point. If your team has two flags captured and you kill someone, you'll get two points. And if you have all three flags captured and you kill someone, you'll get three points. Basically, just making it a lot more easier for people to understand how the scoring system works. We don't actually have an idea of what the end score is going to be, but we do know that matches are now going to be eight minutes in length. So those are the changes to control. Now along with all this information, we got to see a brand new map that is going to be playable in the beta. It is called Endless Veil vale and it is located on Nessus. Now as I've mentioned in previous videos, I'm assuming that the next PvP reveal that IGN has before the beta goes live will be another PvP map that we'll see in the beta. We already have the PvP map we've seen before located on the last city. So we know we're going to have at least two, maybe three multiplayer maps in the beta. Now along with all the changes to Control and the brand new PvP map, we also got the gameplay reveal of the Titan Sentinel and the Void Walker Warlock. These are things people have wanted to see since Destiny 2 was first announced, so let's take a look at the Titan Sentinel first. Now in these gameplay reveals we don't get a look at the skill trees for either of these two subclasses, so we can't really make assumptions on how these are going to play at this current time, we'll have to wait until we can see the exact perks and things that make these subclasses what they are, but we do get to see the supers in action, and we'll take a look at them now. So the Titan pops his sentinel, he goes purple, has a shield out, he can then charge with the shield, kind of like what you could do in Destiny 1 with a relic, you can charge forward and hit an enemy, same applies here, or the sentinel can then throw his shield and it seems to bounce off. Now from this clip we can see that he actually uses the charge quite a few times, and his super doesn't go down that quickly, he manages to get 3 kills here, and doesn't get stopped in his super as well, so he seems to be pretty tanky, can charge around, knock people around. We don't get that much gameplay of him throwing his shield, we only see that once, so it is unsure how that's going to work, whether we can throw that multiple times, maybe we only get one shot at that, how that kills people, if it kills someone, does it then rebound? We don't really know about that stuff at this current time. But I will say the super does look cool, and I'm sure it's going to be really annoying to play against, just like the Sunbreaker was in Destiny 1. We can then take a look at the other Void class for the Warlock, and it looks like it's changed quite drastically from what we saw in Destiny 1. He pops the Nova Bomb, and it's this massive orb that flies slowly towards an enemy and actually tracks them. As we can see from the gameplay, it slowly goes around the wall, kills an enemy, and actually keeps on going. So it seems like it's going to have a sort of time duration, rather than a once you've killed someone with it, that's it, it just stops. Again, we don't know the skill trees for these supers, so we don't know if there's going to be a version where it scatters into multiple pieces, maybe a version where it doesn't track, it's a smaller size bomb and it goes really quick, 
We don't know about these things, but I'm sure we'll learn more about them, if not before the beta, when the beta goes live, because I believe all of the supers are going to be available for us to use. So make sure you stay tuned because I will have a breakdown of each skill tree when we get them given to us. And that was IGN's PvP reveal for today. They have another PvP reveal on July 13th, as well as tomorrow they have the developing story for Destiny 2. And on the 12th we get a closer look at the Sentinel Titan, so probably a breakdown of its skill tree there. So I'll be sure to keep you guys covered on that. So let me know what you guys think about the changes to control. Do you like them? Are you not really a fan of control? Are you going to be playing Countdown more in the beta? What do you think of the brand new map, the Endless Veil? Vale? Does it look like a map you'll enjoy? And out of the Sentinel and the Voidwalker, which one gets you more excited? Because I'm a Warlock, obviously the Voidwalker gets me more excited. I'm probably going to be using that more than the Dawnblade, but I'll have to have a closer look at the skill trees before I make my mind up. So let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Feel free to give the like button a big old hug and subscribe if you'd like to stay up to date with more Destiny 2 content and coverage. Hope you guys have an awesome day. Thanks for hanging out with me and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye bye.